All right, we're back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're going to the last moments of uh, Planet Green Cheese. We have probably waited for I'm sorry, Amanda. You know, I can't even do it in full time. We fucked up again. No, it's like my professional procrastinator. Just roll with the punches. Okay, fine. Well, we were very glad to, and Amanda, you know, we, we featured, you know, because of all the tragedies that you've faced in various videos on, and you've discussed the forfeiture and you testified before the legislature and um, you've been, you know, dragged through the system. And yesterday we learned that uh, we'd recently been before the Court of Appeals and the, the one, there's one case out of Wayne County, which is... One of the most remarkable cases I've ever been involved in. And uh, Court of Appeals did something that is remarkable for Court of Appeals. And they um, vacated the conviction of the uh, court, the trial court. Um, and that means that they uh, analyzed the case and they made a conclusion that there was not enough evidence to convict you of a, of a crime there was insufficient evidence as the term of art, and they vacated the conviction, setting it aside. Um, most of the time, if the court makes a finding that's going to be favorable to the defendant, they usually remand it to the trial court to have a redo, which uh, in the context of appellate court cases, that is additionally why this is uh, so remarkable. And uh, as my dear friend Alan Peisner uh, pointed out to me, and really what would be the best way to, like, without getting into all of it, would demonstrate the depth by which we litigated this case and how more, much more fight we had. And footnote eight of the opinion says, in light of uh, this conclusion that they uh, vacated the conviction, we need not consider defendants' numerous other additional claims of error, because there was many. So they they chose the one that they could get to quickest and shut it down after that and it was kind of the running joke when we did the oral, oral arguments because I kind of got up and like there's a lot of issues kind of looking for them to tell me where do you, you know where do you guys want me to start they said insufficient evidence I'm like okay we'll start there and then I start trying to get up with some other stuff and they were like nope your brief's good sit down you know it's very good brief they right that, but that's code for them like sit down <laughs> we've read the court of appeals justices that's how they tell you like just be quiet we've heard enough your brief's great. You're like, but judge, <laughs> your brief is great. You it should sit an down. Excellent brief. Yeah, they kept saying that. <laughs> they don't do like you. They don't say, shut up, shut up, shut up. No, they are. <laughs> but they, but they it's like, it it's a little bit. You know, here. It took me three times until I realized what they were doing. It was like a wink and a wink, uh -huh. like, your brief is really good. <laughs> nice job. Sit down. Sit dress down, right, Mr. Right. Kamorn. <laughs> anyway, so there's, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's an outrageous story. And the opinion, which is not a, it's, Published in the sense that it is part of the, it wasn't published as it relates to precedent. This is one of those cases, and most time trial uh, courts rulings are usually just specific to that particular fact pattern, and it may not have a impact. Although we've been discussing trying to get it uh, purchased, it's uh, published because um, there's a very very interesting legal issue that uh, that could establish good precedent, which is. Uh, what, 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 is the, what is the amount of evidence that would substantiate or uh, be sufficient for a conviction of a crime of possession with intent to deliver when the only evidence that exists to uh, is an uh, electric bill and the government's theory is not just the possession with intent to deliver but the aiding and abetting of the possession with intent to deliver. And um, that was part of the analysis here. In order for there to be a conviction of that type, it, it's not enough to just have beyond a reason without evidence that a person possessed intent to deliver marijuana, which is what would be required for 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 that crime. Th they had no evidence of that, and they were trying to attach your culpability to you, you particularly, to the culpable marijuana through and with only this phone bill. And the elements for aiding a better require more, an intention uh, assisting in and as they said and it was as they said as it related to this particular day when this uh, evidence was seized and they said that that cannot make out uh, beyond a reasonable doubt and the evidence is insufficient as it relates to those elements but I mean there's so much more to this case and what I just said is kind of boring and blah 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 I mean this is a case that is uh, 
I mean, it's, it's quite remarkable. I don't want to minimize that, but the, but it didn't start this way, right? I mean, they started with criminal charges involving a uh, continuing criminal enterprise allegations. They had a uh, confidential informant whose name is Brandy Logie, and Brandy Logie was a medical marijuana patient, and she had a affinity for using cannabis for to treat her medical condition, and uh, but for reasons that for reasons that were unknown at the time, but turned out to be rather important. Um, she was uh, acting as a confidential informant and uh, had participated in four controlled buys over between September and March. And despite that, she also uh, made 24 buys for herself <coughs> to treat her own medical conditions. And I, and I found, you know, in the context of the CI and the government having control over them and not having them do illegal behavior while they are working for the government and the idea that 24 times she went and bought marijuana for her own medical use and they were okay with that, but the four times that they sent her in. This is simultaneously? She's buying yeah. for herself and mm -hmm. and, so, and yes. surveying? Yes. So, yeah. so, yes. The idea is like if someone's buying... This is buy, ridiculous. Someone's buying heroin, right? You know, mm -hmm. for, for controlled buys for the police and then they go back the next day to the house and buy for themselves. I mean, that's for, for their purpose, that's not supposed to happen. No. When they sign up a CI... It is, uh, they're supposed to control them, and, and they make promises they're not going to participate in any other illegal behavior. But, um, and it's just, you know, the, the, and, and, and what's ironic, not ironic, I mean, it's stupid, really, but the logic of, uh, you know, a person who would do four controlled buys and then, buy, you know, use the cannabis for their own medical use, it's just, it's, well, I mean, you know why. I mean, well, okay, okay. So, so what happens is the uh, that that testimony that I just described there by this CI is what drove the entire case. It's what resulted in the bind over the district court. We filed numerous motions, as the court of appeals alluded to. Those being, amongst others, the um, entrapment, because the local community had given you authority. To uh, participate, they came and inspected the building. You submitted plans. They sent, gave you a certificate of occupancy. The fire department was out there. The police department been out there, on four or five other occasions. You contacted them. You explained to them. They called you one time. The place was being broken into. The police told you to move the marijuana where it was being stored in another place for safety purposes. They knew you were there. And, and the other idea, the other side of it is, if you know, for nine months you're in a stri strip mall next to a tanning salon down from the place where the cops eat donut shop. Donut shop nine months, and this is going on, and this is continuing criminal enterprise for nine months, and these morons didn't figure this out? <laughs> like, for nine months it took them? You know what I mean? Like, like what, 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 what is going gathering on? Gathering information. Anyways, right? it, was, yeah. it was insane. Yeah. So Apparently so. Yeah. <laughs> we get up to circuit court, and uh, we litigate all these motions, and um, as it goes sometimes, the dynamic of the, uh, and this is a case against the Attorney General's office, and the Attorney General's office at that time was uh, taking this position that you couldn't, uh, you know, there's, uh, can't argue, if you, you know, there's limitations on the, of, of, of the behavior that will result in you losing your affirmative defense. And this was sold to the court, this um, overhauled idea that if you caregiver, I don't know, whatever, I didn't want to talk about it. But whatever nonsense it was, it was all driven by this CI's testimony and her connection, despite her being, I mean, it was, it was interesting. I had the Attorney General at the time agreed that there was no issue with prong one of her three prongs of the Section 8, which is that she had a bona fide doctor-patient relationship, right? Which is usually the hardest one. I, I don't know how I was going to prove that, but he consented to it. So we had that. And then she began to talk about how the marijuana she bought 24 times was for her medical use. She bought it for, you know, and she tried to say, well, she... She shorted me, she shorted me, shorted me. me. Yeah. or something like that. And I was like, and what happened? You, need, you needed well, more. Yeah, you needed more. Your head hurt. So you had to go back and get more. You needed for your, you know what I'm saying? So she was in medical need. Like she used it for her own medical use, <coughs> right? Oh. And at least to create a question of fact, I would think. Could, so the court, uh, as you know, we're working on the appeal. I, I, I know that this judge did not like this case. Let's just leave it at that. I mean... He did not like it. He didn't like the, uh, he said, you know, and it's fine. But um, he didn't like it at all. Didn't like it at all. The last thing. And then, 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 as we got ready to, you know, getting ready to, so we went through all these, you know, motions, evidentiary hearings, 
We we did a Dover hearing regarding the uh, reporting of the marijuana brownies. By the lab at that time was that uh, they were reporting it as we're not sure if this marijuana brownie contained <coughs> THC from marijuana or it was synthetically made. Oh. And we had a hearing called the Dauber hearing and uh, some of the testimony by the lab scientists from Lansing were that when they send me those same brownies, I don't test them. I just leave them on the shelf because I know that the way they're asking me to report it is not the way that I would do that. So I'm not going to go against my scientific creed. And despite this lab analysis from Lansing, who wasn't the one that tested, we called him to testify. We called someone from the lab because we knew from the emails that we got in the Max Lorenz case that there was certainly a issue amongst the lab whether they were going to change the policy, why they changed the policy and that whether it was appropriate. With that being said, and that lab scientist seemingly being the whistleblower, everyone else in the lab got behind the crazy lab policy and defended it to their death. They came in and said, oh yeah, that substance could be synthetic THC schedule one. Have you ever seen it before, I would ask. They'd say, no, we don't even, we've never seen it, but it could be. Has there ever been a raid in the history of Michigan where a synthetic THC lab was uncovered? No. You know, I mean, it, like it just, it, and the idea in this game is that they're saying it's possible, but science doesn't work in possibilities. Anything's possible. It's plausibility. Mm -hmm. That's how there's supposed to be some, and it was implausible, yet they defended it. And ironically, the, uh, Whistleblower who um, refused to test reported to us after that was at the end of the, I don't know, I don't know, 16, maybe so we went to 17. Sure enough, the lab changed the policy. And they're reporting it as marijuana. And, and as he complained about, they were, his whole argument was are we really suggesting that this came from synthetic THC? Don't we just have to pull? the paper over and read the data from our GCMS machine which shows all these other cannabinoids. These other cannabinoids wouldn't be in this you know, substance if it didn't come from a plant because right. synthetic is pure THC made from non-marijuana so plants. Not, it's not the right answer though. Right, so um, meaning that re reporting question of plausibility, they have the evidence right in front of them to tell them that, that they're wrong and they, they try to report otherwise. I mean, I, that was a phenomena that is just insane. They changed the policy. We sued, ironically, in the federal court and their change of policy and the results in other cases where courts dismissed the charges because they recognized that if you're reporting the substance as we're not sure what it is, it could be this or it could be that, that isn't probable cause of anything. That's the opposite of evidence. It's, it's doubt. So the result is you dismiss those cases. But there they were, the judge saying, well, you know, the machine worked. You know, they identified THC. Machine worked, but that's but THC is not illegal in itself. THC is either marijuana or synthetic. Yep. I, it's not listed as a controlled substance, either marijuana or synthetic. So, you know, and the scientists are not just running the machine. They have a duty as forensic scientists to know the law and if the chemical is on the controlled substance, they have to name it and, and, and identify it. And they were doing this in error knowingly. That was another issue in the case. Um, and of course, uh, as we were gearing up to go to trial, it was learned that the Brandy Logie had uh, perjured herself in all those proceedings. All those days that I asking her questions and she was giving answers and she had uh, previously lied in the original proceedings, which was caused the bind over, because when we asked her, what is your interest in, in being a CI and why are you here today? And because uh, usually, most instances, if you're going to be working for, as a confidential informant, there's a reason. You know, There are some limited, I've found, that there are people that just like to hang out with the police and they admire the police and they want to go help them out and stuff, but they're usually weirdos. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're like yeah, kind of... I do. I know exactly <laughs> okay. the type so of person you're talking about. Not, not, but, it's not yeah. the tradition. Like not, you know, because so, so, my question that I was trying to get out and uh prosecutor was interfering with me 
time, the Attorney General was saying things like uh, objection, asked, answered, and you know, knowing that the question I was asking, what I was trying to get to, is something that I'm allowed to ask because the motive. Who for, was it? Who did that? The motive for why someone is testifying is always relevant. It absolutely is. And um, not anymore. And uh, and why there would be judge. a C, why there would be a CI, why there would be a CI is relevant. You know you. Because I'm, I'm thinking that they got in trouble themselves, and they're, you know, they're working off a case. What did you yeah. do? Did you kill somebody? Did mm -hmm. you lie about something? How honest are you? Or you know, no. She says I'm here because I'm a do-gooder. Do and your client, who I bought marijuana from 24 times, tell me is selling marijuana to anybody, including oh. me. Wow. And I'm offended by that. And that's why I'm here. This is what this is. This is the rap She's she goes offended. with, which makes absolutely no sense in any <laughs> planet of reasonableness. Okay. It is very offensive. So it turns out when we're getting Plus ready... Plus you ripped her off. You shorted her. <laughs> I know. Her. You shorted her. And probably about 23 of the 24 times she came I'm in. I'm sure. <laughs> she had her thumb on the scale. <laughs> yeah. I'll oh. tell you what. So you here you go. calibrate so that... those suckers every now and again. Yeah. <laughs> is this okay that we were doing it? Do you want to talk? Because I'm, I'm, I'm just rambling on of it. Uh, okay. <laughs> just, I got another hour and a half. You guys okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Important note. Go for it. There was a we'll, attorney get to on we'll, get to, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. So what happens is, as we're getting ready for trial, the uh, former attorney general who's working on the case had been appointed to the bench. What was his name? Fuck Bill Shooty. Yeah. And he then uh, a new prosecutor filled in for him. And as uh, the, the, we were return, we left and we're coming back for the, to start the trial. She made it known to me that there was a reason that wasn't disclosed to me of why she was testifying. It was because. She was working off a case for her boyfriend who had been charged with three continuing criminal enterprise charges that the prosecutor, who is now a judge, had signed an agreement with her to do that and was also the prosecutor on the boyfriend's case who he was giving a deal to. So what we learned was that the prosecutor, Attorney General at the time, in the district court, knew of the lie and tried to interfere with me uncovering it, didn't, didn't turn over... Uh, Brady material, continued to perpetuate the, the, the failure to do so, and uh, elicited testimony from her throughout all these other proceedings without correcting the record. Worse yet, the officer in charge of the case sat there the entire time and never reported to his superiors, never reported to a prosecutor's office. But when he was at trial in this case, I asked him, did you say something to the prosecutor, the attorney general? He said, yeah, I did. Did he do anything about it? No, he didn't. So what turns out is that the... Uh, when this was learned, and I do give some credit to the, uh, I don't, uh, you know, for, for being honest in this regard, the, the, new attorney, the attorney general for turning it over. Um, for being honest. For being honest in that regard. I mean, require. but, but, yeah, but, I, but like, give her credit. <laughs> she did it. The, okay. other ones, the other ones didn't follow their job I know, duties. I know, but look what's it. And I will happened. tell you, it is, okay. it, is a, it is something she will probably <laughs> never do again. I'll tell you that, because. I, I mean, whatever. She did. She did the right thing. You she did. She, you think she caught backlash for doing her job? Probably. Yeah. And 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 she wanted to sweep it under the rug. I don't think she recognized the severity of what had taken place, or that I'm not going to think of it as anything that being very very severe. And um, what ended up happening was the confidential informant was uh, now exposed as a liar. We we were ordered to go into the uh, conference room so we could hear what she would have to say. And I recorded the entire thing. Oh. Yeah. That's awesome. That's what pissed her off, I think. <laughs> because now I had an admission of a perjurer liar. Okay? And you when... recorded it? Yeah. Was it known? Did you tell everybody? doesn't Michael have to be. Mess around. It does not have that to be. That just... It, we don't need to get Michigan into the Michigan is a one-party state. Maybe. No, there's no <laughs> maybe. Mi Michigan is a one-party one state. It it's more than clear. It's not clear. It's very clear. Show me the case. <laughs> Read the it's statute. the law. Read the statute. It's not the law. It is. It's not clear. I've read All it. All right. Well, we'll get back to that in a it's second. Not clear. We're going we're gonna to we'll circle to, back to this. Yeah, we'll table that. Yeah, this is good. I want to hear why that's not the case. So I prefer people to record me. For sure. I walked out of the uh, room, and I told, and we told the judge she's uh, she has a lot of reasons why she want, thinks it's okay to lie, but she lied. He said, okay, I'm going to appoint her a lawyer. Lawyer met with her. Lawyer advised her she take the Fifth Amendment. She took the Fifth Amendment. The judge uh, declared her unavailable for the trial and also tossed out all of her testimony, which, which, which literally included, I'd say, 1,500 pages worth of transcripts. Okay? And uh, 
at, and that was the moment where uh, we were amazed by that, and we were scheduled to come back, you know, finish for the day, come back another day. And I remember I thought that was the end of the case. No. no, I didn't realize we like when I found out we were in appeal. I was like, what? Wait, the confidential informant lied? Was it the end of the case? Like, no. I thought all the deliveries got tossed <laughs> out. The prosecutor like subordinated perjury, and the we were just moving inform- forward in silence until the main. Att- there's, there, there, when he told me about there's an it, important was, fact here, and I'm going to get back to that. As we stood there, with the day was adjourned, we were to come back to deal with some more of the case, and we saw Brandy Logie, the now known perjured and recorded as doing so on my phone, uh, you know, taking the fifth, and uh, because she perjured herself, even though her unavailability did not allow for the testimony to come in, you know, under the court rules, it would otherwise, if she had not been deemed a liar, left the courtroom, walked down, we were standing in front of the building, see her walk, goes down the stairs of recorder's court building, into the van of her boyfriend, who got the benefit of her CI activity, and left, and was never charged with a crime. Now, this is the thing that is most offensive to me, because if you are in the business, as a prosecutor, attorney general, of prosecuting individuals, that means you're calling witnesses. And the only way that, w- that you can ever justify your sworn oath as serving justice, because Prosecutors seek justice. They're not supposed to win any costs, and they have a duty of a lot of duties associated with the uh, special duties of a prosecutor and uh, disclosure of exculpatory evidence, correcting known perjurers are part of that. And in this particular case, um, I would I'm, I'm most troubled by the fact that in that it was the business of prosecuting witnesses, and they n- had a knowing liar in their case, and they didn't prosecute her, it suggests that all of the other prosecutions that they may be doing have no consequences if witnesses lie. And that's been my biggest problem because that same boyfriend, Brandy Logie, Thomas McCullen, is a witness in another case that still exists and still pending in Livingston and uh-huh. Genesee County. Are you listening, David? Yeah. <coughs> and uh, that was the old attorney general, but these cases still continue. And even knowing that to be the case, I, this this appeal was not. Um, I mean, they showed up, they didn't vacate it themselves. And and David, to answer your question, with all that being said, what was left of the case was that uh, it limped. An electric th- bill. No, it was that they when they raided the facility, there was uh, marijuana that was found there. Okay, and an electric bill they tried to attach so to her. P-wed. Our only defense at trial was was. Th- she didn't do it because we had been deprived our right to present immunity as an, you know, Section 4's immunity to get out of it, and we weren't able to present a Section 8 defense because of <laughs> overhauled delivery to a non-patient, which vitiated, right? But now that she's gone, we're mid-trial, we got no, we got no Section 8, you know what I mean? So the, the, the judge convicted her on p she could have... But what was the evidence besides the electric <coughs> Nothing. <coughs> Like that was, that admissible. was it. That was it. You know, the court made uh, mistakes in suggesting that uh, a particular officer had seen her going into the place when, in fact, it was not true. And and even so, you know what they I'm saying? sat like, on the place and watched a bunch of people go in yeah. and out. That was part of the case. That was exactly it. So now, a person going in and out doesn't show possession, constructive possession. Here's an interesting yes. fact, David, and I'm glad that you're here to uh, enjoy in this moment. Not only did the Bill Schutte regime, in this case, get beaten down, and we exposed the cheating ways of them, the scumbags that they use as witnesses, their failure to prosecute people that they're using in knowing line. The officer in the case, I, I can't excuse him either. The officer in charge, he witnessed and told the prosecutor she's lying. He didn't correct it to me or anybody else to make a report as if that's, I mean... We all know that this takes place. But here's the other thing. David and I... And, and did he really, or was he saving his ass? You know, I mean, I don't know. David and I and Denny Hayes, the lawyer out of... Uh, yeah, Ann Arbor, represented uh, Amanda and her son and some other guy in, uh, <laughs> in um, the associated case out of uh, Ypsilanti, where her house is raided. And uh, the Attorney General was on that case as, as well. And you know what they did in that case, David? Yes, you do, because you were there. They violated her constitutional rights on that one as well. Bam. Fourth Amendment. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know many people that can say they 
not just beat, but beat the fuck out of the Attorney General twice. I mean, pretty remarkable, Amanda. Seriously. <laughs> and I would I would put you that did. all to yeah. a Seriously. lot of fucking hard work. Yeah. Um, it didn't it seem, you. when we started off, it did not seem like, uh, I mean, our side of the, the Fourth Amendment violation seemed pretty clear, but I was not so confident on the other half of that case going the way it did. But then, you know, I mean, that was, when did it, when did we find out the girl lied? How many years ago? At tr on the day of trial. How, yeah. how, how long ago? It was probably <clears throat> two about mid 2017. So we're we're talking two years ago, yeah. right? That oh, I yeah. thought that was the end. You know, it was almost two years the later. End. We're finally here. Yeah, but we yeah we you know we, we gotta I keep mean, coming back. We can't you know. So you're free. We don't want to roll over. But I mean, how does it feel? You're finally I, you're finally free from this. Yeah, I woke up this morning. My coffee tastes better. <laughs> my pastries taste a little bit more light and fluffy and free <laughs> yeah. and my marijuana it it's 100 times better 100 times better that's good it really so, is it really yeah. is it's been, it's been a be fight said. you've had to go through a war yeah and it's a victory for sure so. for yeah. a lot of us not yeah. just me i mean yeah i mean i i can't i i don't think i mean i i, I may say this more, but this is really i mean the, the, you know there's a similar Similar type of situation where in Wayne County, where a prosecutor was uh, found to be supporting perjury, and it did not turn out well for them. Although I heard that she was recently readmitted to the State Bar of Michigan. Who Karen, that? Karen Plants. You know the story? No, no, I don't. Yeah. But I mean, you know, just a side note, footnote to this story, there's still a judge on the bench. Yeah. Who knowingly yeah. allowed. A witness to lie on the stand to get Amanda Joslin. So what do you guys? Like, what do you think is going to happen? Not a murderer that needed to go away. Well, that's a, you know. I mean, all the way back to. I'm just saying when we get to like the morality yeah. here, a judge is who's currently culpable? sitting, not. Uh, subordinated perjury to get somebody who is selling marijuana to medical marijuana patients. You know that. Jail. You know that there's that's a. What, that was his goal. Everybody that had a medical marijuana card too. That's what I'm saying. Selling marijuana to medical marijuana patients, which we're currently licensing and the state's profiting off of, the exact same conduct that was going on at the time all over the state of Michigan, but Amanda Joslin, and not, he wanted you so bad that he was willing to not sit quiet while he, a witness, he was knowing, a witness, he allowed, and not only did he allow, but he objected and tried to prevent Michael from bringing out the fact that she was lying under oath Good and point. trying to hide it. Um, and this guy's still a judge. So what do what do you think? What do you guys think well, about that? Well, I think I think uh, you know. I would say this. I would say this. Some people here, anybody here that is aware of this, you know, has the ability to file a grievance against a judge. Well, let me say this. I'm not, I, whether I mean, first of all, let me say this. I know that I never have to appear in front of him ever. Yeah, I don't plan on it. <laughs> no, no. I'm saying if I get a case assigned to him, I'm not going. <laughs> I will get a new judge because there's an order that is pending that I get to get a new judge. So I'm never going in front of him again. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I, I addressed the issues of his perjury in the past, and a uh, chief judge of the court identified that it would be patently unfair for me to ever have to appear in front of him because of his behavior. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, it's not a, but yes, but it is a problem, I would think, for the rest of the I world. Mean, it's it's in just that, the fact and, that this and, and guy's I, still a judge. This has been reported. This is not a secret. It's How about, not a secret okay, so that he, he subordinated perjury. There's two major players that, are, that, that should be bench? being addressed by their, uh, it would seem to be investigated by the uh, licensing boards and whatnot. And, well, you know, and, and it would seem as if there would be a duty of mine to report those things if you follow the uh, MREs of that. And I, I won't say anything more about that other than that. But I would also suggest that um, I have no problem saying that I... Uh, I felt it important that the Attorney General at the time, likewise, uh, be... File a report under the MREs as well. ...question because I, I don't, you know, like there's... The, the prosecutors have built into the MREs a duty... I'm sorry. They have the um, discretion to do and charge who they want, right? But using their discretion here in this particular juncture, when it was one of their own witnesses and they don't prosecute, would suggest that they should not
be exercised in their discretion. They are in conflict. Yeah, or they, they, if they you feel, what I'm I, you I what think I'm that they're that, in conflict they, and they should refer it to a to the you know local prosecuting branch or do something. But if there is no action taken, I mean, I'm dealing with the same witnesses. The officer in charge of the case is pivotal in another case that we're doing in Livingston County and uh, Tennessee County. Same crew. I mean, I don't know how. I mean, and if we were thinking that that no one in the police knows that they went on with this, they can get away with this stuff. Anyways, it's, it continues on. I don't know. There was a um, report we were talking about last week. How Michigan has be, become known as the uh, most corrupt state for scandals. And what was that report we talked about last week? Report. What report? <laughs> we talked about it last week. I think the. the have, we, have you guys talked at all about how the Warren City Council is very likely going to be going down for some corrupt activities. We need to get Shiler in here on this subject. Yeah, I, I love the Warren City Council. I, I'll say that... I mean, the, they, the, they're... They're, well, they're... Half of them are going to be gone here in a couple of months anyway. I, I'm, I mean, I think it needs to be said, but... Well, I mean... I mean, they were pretty much asking for bribes uh, for yep. this, these medical marijuana licenses in Warren. They sent out... After they, it was deemed they couldn't run... Yeah. For another term, they were sending out fundraiser requests to every single person that applied for a medical marijuana license that was on a license application. Yeah. And I mean, the FBI is aware of this. Well, you to know, my knowledge, it's uh, corrupt cities, man. Talk about that. It's it was just like it, open. It's always been like that, though. I mean, it's not. It's never. And people are pissed though about this, which is funny to me because there's been such. M- much more egregious I mean, behavior. Is still the mayor. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so. That speaks volumes. How did how did that happen? And he he blew past everyone in the primary. Teflon, and, Teflon, yeah. Teflon, Jim Fouts. Yeah, Teflon, Jim. Yeah, people just don't care. They they like the fact that he's racist and misogynistic. And they vote him in by like eighty percent, don't they? I mean, I don't know. No, it is. It's I, something out. Is it something like that, Jim? Here's something here's crazy the, yeah, like that, crazy. guys. The Marysville woman. Oh yeah. <laughs> City Council. yeah, she's still on the ballot. Oh, I thought she no, was I not because they she were pre-printed. Said, she said she withdrew, but that's not how it works. The pl- ballots are pre-printed, so yeah. they can't get her off. She's yeah. still going to be on that ballot. Interesting so to see how many let's votes she see gets. How many people? Oh she gosh. said she's out of the campaign, like she doesn't want the job. But we'll see how many votes she still gets. Oh my gosh. I'll be following. Wow. Yep. Yeah. I'll yeah. be watching that too. Yeah. Crazy lady. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> They're all crazy. The look on the other council so members' serious. faces when she was talking, the people sitting on the other side. And then when they interviewed her afterwards, and she's yeah. like, she's well, like, well, a black yeah. couple coming to Marysville will deal, yeah, we'll we'll deal with that. that. Right. But, but the intermixing, oh, that's so the People problem. are better like, off by themselves. Kind of yeah. Like, yeah. She felt like that was taking a better position than she had previously made. Compromising <laughs> yeah. position. Yeah. <laughs> Smart, it smart really politics. Good. <laughs> it's good. What yeah. the fuck is going on? Guys. That's insane. It is. It is. Where, where courts in California rule that cops can steal from people. Yep. yep. Qualified immunity. I love some qualified immunity. I know. <laughs> I want some qualified immunity for defense attorneys, you know? Yeah, good luck. Not a chance. We do enough of it? I, I, we got to come back. I mean, what do you think, man? What do you else do we have to say? I mean, it was a... Wild ride. I have to say, what a what a what a fight, what a journey. Wild. I mean, there's some there's some really remarkable. Things. It's not over. I don't know that uh, qualified immunity will well, let's fully hope, attach. Let's hope to that you know. Now you get to go into the part of still being in court and still dealing with court, but you're the attacker. That is what I'm looking forward to, actually. If uh, I was, I've been saying that I I hope to go to every single one of them and just sit there, so oh, that yeah. way they. Just like, hey guys, and then, um, and then, like, toward the end, I'll tell Detective Zinzer, "Don't worry, it's almost over," because that's what he told me the one time. Oh, fuck him! How long ago was that? <laughs> How long ago was that? Oh, that was uh, shortly before the sentencing, so 2017. Wow. And who's laughing now? Exactamundo. He's, uh, uh, he's on the drug test force anymore. I promise you that he's not back on the yeah, road. Yeah, he's off. He's back on the road. Is he? Is he writing tickets he's for the, the meters? Car. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know. <laughs> I got a call from he him better, on his last He better day. watch those too. He might be like. He called you to say goodbye. On his, on it, at least his last week. He called <laughs> me to tell me he had promised me that he would call me when they decided to charge a client. 
when they said and he, it booted him. He called me to uh, he called me to basically <laughs> say I'm handing it off. Might not get charged. Might get charged. Can't you know? But he's leaving. He's saying. But I'm not. I won't be a part of it. Sweet. Yeah. But he's still a witness. But he doesn't get to like warn me or whatever. Right. So he um. Do you remember when we were in uh, the Ypsilanti? Started in the Ypsilanti district. I was there today. And I, I know, back we, some memories of our we started in, yeah, a, we started in our room. But we had finished back in Ypsilanti. Right. And I remember him getting on the stand and uh, him admitting that the uh, search warrant for a record search warrant was probable cause for, for a record search warrant was less probable cause than a regular search warrant. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It was like... That transcript was cool. It's gold. like being a little pregnant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's different levels. It's just records. It's yeah. just records. We don't need to have any evidence. I mean, that was the, essentially the government's position. No, 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 no. This is something I want to bring up. Here's the final... Because we got to wrap it up. But I remember... I remember the former attorney general talking and begging and pleading with the uh, circuit court judge in uh, Washington. Remember? Because the basis of going to the house was in our training experience, we've come to learn that if people have an illegal business and they store their fucking records at home, which is not true. All right. Right. And they, they couldn't say that there was a thing. And, and, and um, that was all the only thing that they had. And she kept saying to him, like, well, Mr. Well, Mr. Attorney General, like, were they trained or other than they trained? Well, if they say that that they've been trained, that should be enough, you know. And she's like, "What are you talking about?" Like, well, then, yeah, <laughs> then, then, then just at the training, whether it's true or not, they'll say, "Listen, you're at your training right now. Here's the story. When you write a affidavit, you've been trained now that if you are at a business, that they probably keep records at their house, and that's just, for, you know, that's a, tr but nothing, you know, like they just tell them that, and then they put. Remember that whole argument? Yeah. And he kept saying, she was pressing him on So you're saying in every situation, if it's in their training experience. Like he was, you know, like when, when you got a uh, witness on the stand and they've been instructed to say the one thing, which is my lawyers have told me not to, blah, 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 you know what I mean? He kept saying that, like that I, was his talking point. I remember point. Uh, distinctly, I remember he was trying to make a closing argument and he was making these arguments like I've been hearing. And you stood up and you're like, I gotta stop this. And you did a Donald Trump impression of like, you know, I've been hearing that uh, China's did, bad, you know, or wait a whatever. Second. Like, and you like stopped his thing and made a Trump joke. And we all had a funny laugh about how Trump wasn't gonna get elected. Oh my God, <laughs> you're probably right. I was probably laughing out loud like, like this made fucking. Like a joke, like he's, like, oh my God, he's acting like Trump. And we were all laughing. It was before he won the primary. Oh, and we were all laughing. That's fucking hilarious. Uh, that is funny. <laughs> Right, who knew? Right? Like, <laughs> who knew? Yeah. At the time, it was like unimaginable Trump was our president. Oh. To us, at least. In the Ann Arbor court. You know what? I'm going to start doing that more. My, my, my argument should be like, well, I heard the other day. <laughs> so therefore, I've you got to believe hearing. Me. That's a Trump right, I've been hearing. Yeah. People are hearing. telling me. Yeah. Everybody's they telling say. me. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> telling me. Yeah. Right? They're saying. Yeah. It's we, rapists coming in. We rapists. Gotta, we got to wrap it up. All right, fine. Wrap Is that enough? Up. We'll come back. We'll do some more. Next week's more Amanda. Some more Ken counting time. And David, you're not going to be here. You're going to be. Uh, I'm going to be smoking. Off boarding. In you're in Amsterdam wow. next week. Nice. Tomorrow right. in Tampa. David, are any, right? other, are any other drugs recreationally uh, legal there? Uh, truffles that have psilocybin. Wow. Oh, yeah. We bought at, bought at Smart Shops. Uh, the Smart Shops with the like mushroom, they have, also, they have peyote there. Wow. wow. All sorts of stuff I've never tried. Powders and. From flowers and other countries that I've never heard of, um, but generally, wow. marijuana. Generally marijuana. What's the gun laws there? No guns. The guns are bad. You can't have them, or people just don't. You can't have them unless you're a gangster, basically. <laughs> okay. Like some people, I think you can have hunting rifles under very specific. It's really uh, strict. The police, like, you, there's a license you can get to go hunt. The police like, carry guns. Police uh, do carry guns sometimes there, um, but a, how many murders in that per yeah. capita there of Amsterdam Central? Amsterdam is the murder capital of Europe, um, but it's because of the looser drug laws. So a lot of like the big, like most of the murdering that happens is like behind. You're not seeing the murders. It's not like it's out like on the streets. It's like in the alleys and yeah, the back it's, ways. The, and, it's yeah. like there's. There's pretty strong organized crime there because of the it's got the loosest restrictions. So like a lot of the ecstasy for the whole world comes out of Amsterdam, and you know one gang shoots another gang, but yeah. you don't 
You don't feel like it's the murder. It's not like Detroit. Well, that's like Detroit, good. you feel like you're in the murder capital yeah, a little kinda, bit. You hear gunshots. Kinda. Like in Amsterdam, it's not. You don't. You don't hear gunshots. The the crime you worry about in Amsterdam is like pickpockets and yeah, um, petty theft. You know, like uh, bums trying to rob people in the red light district at four in the morning or something mm. like that. I don't know. It's a pretty. It's a pretty safe town. Yeah. When Sounds you're from like Detroit, it. walking around Amsterdam feels. Pretty you safe. feel all right. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is nothing. You know, I've never felt unsafe in Amsterdam, ever. I've never. I mean, I just met some people this weekend that were in for a show from like New York and Philadelphia and Boston, and they were talking about, "Oh, Detroit's so cool. It feels so safe. It's just like Boston." So I'm like, Whoa. "Wow, <laughs> yeah." Just Wowzers. don't walk a couple streets over. That's what yep, I said. And I said, "Well, where did you go?" Starts, and they said, "Well, we went down like around by." A campus marshes, and we went on to Bell Isle, and I'm like, well, okay. Yeah, there's <laughs> that's these, a whole different there's these pockets. Of these little pockets. Safety. Yeah, I feel safe in a lot of places. In well, I do, I do to a point, but still, even in those areas, if something happens, you need an ambulance. You're still. Yep, you're screwed. You're screwed. Screwed. You're screwed. Yeah. That's, yeah, I think that the that response time to a shooting to is still is like very shaky, minutes, even in those areas. Yeah, even in those 50 areas. minutes to a shooting is their well, response Well, my time favorite thing is, is the new shakedown that the Detroit Police Department's doing where they have this flashing green light. You pay extra yeah, for them to $4, protect you. $4,000 a year. Yeah, you pay oh extra. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And yep. if you don't have the and flashing don't, light, they don't call. call. Your calls get deprioritized. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. 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 They call the green light. Okay. You haven't seen the flashing green light? I have seen yeah. that. I yeah. didn't yeah. know what that was they all about. They pay for po oh, yeah. police protection straight from the department. Out of control. Guys, has, has anybody seen RoboCop? Yeah. yeah. Is that even yeah. legal? Private They've been yeah, doing it for over a year. They've yeah. been doing it for a long time. Yeah. That's the that whole green light project. It's crazy. And they they force the shop owners. The four thousand dollars is just the gas stations and the protection money, guys. Right? Protection That's money what is exactly it is. what it is. Protection exactly. Money. They've turned into the fire. And, exactly. and oh my God. they yeah. force the shop to outfit their shop with high with definition cameras, cameras that the they stuff. have access to. It's required. To and it's and required. They and they, yeah, and they monitor it straight I mean, to that, the cop shop. I could see opting into that program. If you want the police to monitor, you have the choice to right. allow that access. Yeah, but to get some quicker response because of not it? Not a quicker response because of it, but still, like, helping them, like, hey, my shop is on CBTV with the police right now, and I'm opting into that. Like, I'm semi okay with that, I guess. Although now my face will be tracked when I go on that shop. It recognizes that the but current system anyways, is flawed. Guys, cameras all over flawed. Detroit. They, they can't even figure out a way how to steal enough money from the citizens to pay for their police force. They got to figure out mm -hmm. some other scam. Mm -hmm. All the other cities are able to figure that out and build a big courthouse. That's what that's what that tells you. Yeah. Biggest yep. biggest scam in the world. When I get older, I want to go to district court. Remind me. And on that note, <laughs> right. on that note, <laughs> peace out, y'all. All right, yeah. we'll be back. It was an excellent. Happy Amanda Day. Important and historical farm crop in American agriculture is returned after having been classified as a controlled substance and illegal. On December 20, 2018, the President signed the Farm Bill, also known as the Agriculture Improvement Act of 2018, into law. The signing of the act was great news for the hemp industry, which amended the definition of marijuana in the Federal Controlled Substances Act. Hemp is now defined as the plant, Cannabis Sativa L, and any part of the plant, growing or not, with less than 0.3% THC concentration on a dry basis. The plant itself is no longer a controlled substance. Hemp is one of the most versatile plants on Earth. From clothing, fiber, paper, building materials, hempcrete, biofuels, CBD, and medical uses, it has been a part of America's industry for over 200 years. Even the United States Constitution was drafted on hemp paper. The time is now. If you're thinking of getting in the farming or processing of hemp, contact our global experts, legal, and consultation teams to make sure that you're on the right road when you venture into the new hemp industrial revolution. Michigan Hemp Industries has been a leader and advocate for the return of the hemp industry. So come be a part of the new revolution in agriculture in Michigan.
Outdoors, the world-famous Grow Green Fall Harvest Expo is going down this Saturday, October 5th at Grow Green in Whitmore Lake. Talk with over 100 factory reps from all the top brands, including Hortolux, Advanced Nutrients, Twister Trimmers, Hydro Farm, and Fresh Coast Seed Co. We'll have genetic companies on site with all the latest hard-to-find strains and are hosting a clone swap so you can bring your fire clones and take home something unique and exciting. Did we mention live music, food trucks, over $12,000 in giveaways, free samples, live trimmer demos, the lowest prices of the year on everything in the store, presentations, bounce houses for the kids, and of course, good vibes only. Come help grow the community along with thousands of other growers this Saturday at Grow Green's Fall Harvest Expo. This event is 100% free and open to everyone. From new growers just starting out to people running state licensed facilities, we have something for everyone. If you grow, you must go to the Grow Green MI Fall Harvest Expo happening this Saturday at Grow Green on M36 and Whitmore Lake. Click growgreenmi.com.